Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, I want to look at a report today published by Analysts in Canada. Very extensive report, runs to over 500 pages, just published last month in July 2024. Now, I'll give you a few of the headlines from this report, and then you can decide if you want to watch. The implications for excess deaths are significant, and we'll be thinking about potential implications of this data uh, towards the end of the video. But let's just have a quick look at it here. This data is taken from 125 countries comprising 35% of the global population. That's 2.7 billion people. So I think you'll agree that's a fairly substantial sample size to be working on. Now, obviously, we're talking about correlations here. One of the things I'm hoping is that this will encourage governments to release more participant level data. So we don't have to use correlations, we can actually use the actual data. Pharmaceutical companies and governments need to release more low-level data so we can have a more accurate analysis. But in the meantime, this is a good uh, proxy to be working on and demands, as we've said, certainly demands quite a lot of uh, questions to be answered. Variations in national all-cause mortality rates during the COVID period. Now, they say this. This is really quite profound, really. Um, I'm just going to read out what they've said here. Um, COVID period, um, COVID period, 2020 to 2023, excess all-cause mortality in the world is incompatible with the pandemic viral respiratory disease, according to these workers. So that's incompatible with what basically... Um, most governments in the world are saying and you can already see that's a question that needs to be answered is it indeed incompatible uh, as the primary cause of death so it's not the primary cause of death according to the data they've looked at from excess deaths this hypothesis that's the hypothesis that these deaths are mostly caused by covid although believed to be supported by testing campaigns should be abandoned forget that one so they say so they say but we'll have to look at the data and adjudicate how likely this is to be true but let's go on that should be abandoned uh, we describe plausible mechanisms and of course we always like plausible biological mechanisms for why something could or is not working uh, the three primary causes of death associated with excess cause or cause mortality during and after the covid period are one is biological and they include psychological in there stress from mandates such as lockdowns and associated socio-economic structural changes so these are largely physical changes brought about by psychological stress and sociological problems and we know in many countries these were extreme especially in countries where um, people depend on their income for their meal that uh, evening and the meal of their families very very stressful situation two non-covid19 vaccine medical interventions such as mechanical ventilation now we know that people who went on mechanical ventilation didn't do uh, very well unfortunately that was learned uh, later than would have been desirable and uh, they also include this which is really quite concerning um, that, that including denial of treatment with antibiotics now of course of course viral illnesses don't normally respond to antibiotics um, but there's a there are some suggestions that certain antibiotics were useful for covid infection but of course there's also always the secondary bacterial infection so um be interesting to look at the data they have to support that to support that claim uh, denial of without treatment with antibiotics three covid vaccine injection rollouts including repeated rollouts on the same population so quite clearly here they're saying that the vaccine rollouts was a contributory factor to excess deaths, which of course is concerning and has got obvious implications for the ongoing production of genetic vaccines, mRNA vaccines in my country, in the UK, a big new plant to produce 250 million a year in the United States, in Canada and Australia, uh, largely through Moderna, going very largely into these form of genetic vaccines. If there's a problem with these genetic vaccines that this data is highlighted, then that program needs to be suspended until these answers are thoroughly, very thoroughly answered. I, I would have thought. It's just my view, of course. Let me know what you think. 
Um, now, the conclusion, uh, we are compelled to state that the public health establishment and its agencies fundamentally caused all the excess mortality in the COVID period via assaults on populations, harmful medical interventions and COVID-19 vaccine rollouts. We conclude that nothing special would have occurred in terms of mortality had a pandemic not been declared and had the declaration not been acted upon. Now, this is clearly a fairly uh, extreme opinion, but the data is in the report. Do look at it for yourself and see if you agree with their conclusions. I'm simply reporting the conclusions of these authors. Um, my personal view is, of course, there were deaths from COVID, so I think they're probably overstating the case somewhat. But if that's what it needs to have this properly analysed by governments and academics around the world, then the, the, this is the case that they have put. But let's go on and see what else they're saying. This is the report here. Spontaneous, uh, uh, sorry, spatio-temporal variation. Sp spatial, different countries, temporal, different times, variation of excess or cause mortality in the world, 125 countries during the COVID period, 2020 to 2023, regarding socioeconomic factors and public health and medical interventions. And this is the uh, correlation research in, public, in the public interest is where it's published. And uh, there's the references and there's the first page of it with the authors. As I say, the report runs to over 500 pages. Remarkably thorough piece of work. Don't pretend to understand all of the statistics in it by any means. Uh, but I'm summarising the conclusions and I will give you some of the statistics specifically so you can make a, a, a somewhat prima facie adjudication uh, for yourself. Now, what they're saying here is... Uh, before and uh, during the COVID period. So they took data, of course, from before to compare it with, to look at the mortality that would be expected as opposed to the mortality that actually occurred. 93 countries had sufficient data. Our calculated excess mortality rate, 0.392% for all of the countries, with a fairly small margin of error, it has to be said there, corresponds to 30.9 million plus or minus 200,000 excess deaths. Now, um, this is clearly a huge number and merits, I feel, an official response. If that official response is, well, no, here's the primary source data, here's the low-level data, here's our analysis of it, and it completely disproves this correlation theory, this correlation work, then, then so be it. But unfortunately, that hasn't been done because the data is still uh, limited. Our statisticians and data scientists don't have access to all the data they would like, not by any means, unfortunately. 30.9 million excess deaths, which is a huge amount, of course, during that period. Projected to have occurred globally for the three-year period 2020 to 2022. So my understanding here is they took the countries they had data for, they analysed that data, they worked out the excess mortality and they projected that onto the whole world population and came up with an excess death figure of over 30 million uh, people. Um, huge number if there's any validity to that whatsoever. Even if it was only 10% of that, it's catastrophic. Um, anyway, let's go on. That was their uh, estimate projected to have occurred. Causes of excess mortality during this period. We also calculated the population-wide risk of increased deaths per injection. Now, this is clearly talking about the COVID vaccine injections. They're able to make calculations on that as well. And here, 78 countries had sufficient data up to 20th of December 2022. 16.9 million COVID vaccination associated deaths. So what they're saying here is uh, 30.9 million overall excess deaths projected for the global population, just over 30, nearly 31 million. Of those, 16.9 million um, vaccine-associated deaths. And again, if this is wrong, we need the data released so that governments and the pharmaceutical industries who hold this data can disprove it and say, no, this is a load of rubbish. Um, here's the real figures. But we need that data and we're lacking that data. Also, um, factors, of course, more excess mortality in older populations and also a correlation with the share of 
proportion of people living in poverty. And of course, in some countries, poverty is much more extreme than in other countries and much more widespread, unfortunately. Global resources are not well divided throughout the peoples of the world. 28 countries have a high statistical certainty um, of persistent and significant excess or cause mortality into 2023. And we have looked at this quite extensively on this channel, that the excess mortality carried on way after any possibility that uh, these were caused by COVID deaths. And the countries they highlight here, you may see your own country in this list. So we see uh, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Denmark, Ecuador, Egypt, Finland, Germany, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Japan, Lithuania, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Puerto Rico, Qatar, Singapore, South Korea, Spain, Sweden, Taiwan, Thailand, United Kingdom and the United States with excess mortality projecting, carrying on into 2023. Uh, and we have looked at some data on this channel that intimated that there was some carrying on into 2024, but we haven't got up to date data on that, so I won't comment further. We are hopeful that the death rates are now going down, but um, that's what we've got up to the end of 2023. Way after it would have been expected. More research is needed to elucidate this phenomena, they say. So good to see that the researchers here are being fully open. They're saying, well, hey, well, no, we need more. But of course, to do more research, we need more data. We have to have more data in the public domain. This culture of secrecy needs to stop and we need to get all this into the public domain. We've got plenty of brilliant analysis, statisticians, doctors, data scientists, computer experts just sitting there waiting for this data. Give it into the public domain and the analysis will commence straight away. And it can show that this is completely inaccurate. Unless, of course, it doesn't show that this is completely inaccurate. This is the frustration the not knowing and uh, decisions being made on us without complete data for our data scientists and statistical advocates to speak on our behalf. They are willing to do so, but they must have the data. They also say this, uh, no evidence of uh, the large vaccine rollouts ever being associated with reductions in excess or cause mortality in any country. And again, that's the claim that these authors are making. This should be peer reviewed by other academics around the world who say, you know what, they were right. Or who say, you know what, they were wrong. And this is why they were wrong. Implications of this are really quite clear. This data needs to be released. We need more public analysis. We need more peer review. If there's any validity to the uh, claims at all, we need radical rethinking of any potential lockdown strategies, etc. in uh, any future emergencies, whether that's pandemics or other emergencies because of the deleterious effects of these interventions. And because we've got so many new genetic mRNA vaccines underdeveloped, respiratory syncytial virus, for example, pretty sure that's already approved in Europe and the United States. Influenza uh, vaccines are being worked on based on messenger ribonucleic acid technology and a range of other ones. Uh, certain individuals and companies are promoting this quite strongly. If there's any validity at all in this data, that needs to be suspended until we can demonstrate that they are completely safe. That's an obvious implication. Now, let me just give you just a few, just a brief snapshot into some of their uh, figures here. So uh, in blue, we have the excess uh, deaths for particular periods of time for different countries. And in the, these lines here, these uh, plain black lines are the uh, vaccine uh, doses given. The reason there's different two black lines is because different sources give different figures, whether it's global sources or local national sources give slightly different figures, but they're, they're roughly uh, in agreement. I think you can see from that. So that's the data. That's the correlations there from Austria. Uh, that's from Canada. So, for example, we see here the increase in vaccination and we see here the increase in excess uh, overall excess mortality. Uh, this one's Australia. Um, and again, if there was a delay between the vaccine rollout and the excess mortality, that wouldn't be terribly surprising. There's plausible biological mechanisms for that. This one is Hungary. 
looks like a fairly tight correlation in Hungary for those couple of curves. And the implications, as we've said, are, of course, uh, immense for the public release of data into the public domain. So significant concerns from this very well conducted, for over, I think, 520 pages, this study. It's all there. You have downloaded the PDF. Uh, download it for yourself, have a look at it. And uh, I think we can assume that regulatory agencies and pharmaceutical industries around the world are reading this as we speak. I would hope. Let me know what you think. Do have a look at the report. Um, the, the introduction, the first couple of thousand words is really quite intelligible. <laughs> uh, look at it for yourself and see what you think and let me know. And uh, tell me if you agree with the implications that I have uh, suggested. But for now, as always, thank you for watching.